Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another session of Close Looking. My name is Renata Azevedo Moreira, and I'm the Assistant Curator of Canadian Art at the Art Gallery of Ontario. I am delighted to be here to talk about the work After Phaeton by American Canadian artist Tim Whiten. This impressively bright, stunning glass sculpture that I'm soon going to show you is now on view at the McLean Center for Indigenous and Canadian Art on the second floor at the AGO. It is oriented toward the east, where the sun rises, and is the only sculpture in a gallery filled with abstract paintings from several historical Canadian artists. But before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that even though we're virtually gathered here and there are many of us who are joining from other lands, the land where I am speaking from and where the AGO is situated is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is still home to many diverse First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people all around Turtle Island. I'm going to share my screen now. So over the past four decades, artist Tim Whiten has produced one of the most distinct bodies of work in the contemporary history of Canadian art. Rooted in ritual, spiritual, and philosophical beliefs, Whiten, Whiten's mixed media performances installations and sculptural work are an authentic reflection of an artist who is deeply engaged with the spiritual in a contemporary world. As author Michael, Michael Greenwood uh, has written, and I quote, in his work, Whiten seems to have found a way to strike a balance between the sacred and the profane. The result? is a simultaneous embrace of the intimate and the infinite, the everyday and the sublime, and access for the viewer to new vistas." End quote. Born in the city of Inkster in Michigan in 1941, Whiten came to Toronto in 1968 following military service in Vietnam. He had just completed his MFA at the University of Oregon, and Whiten has then, uh, was then hired by the newly founded York University here in Toronto, where he would teach into the 2010s. A highly prolific artist, his pursuits have long been grounded in transcendentalist beliefs, um, in over 40 years of exhibiting, he has sought to navigate the territory of the human condition and its transformative potential with a body of work encompassing a myriad of forms, both two and three dimensional, including site-specific works, real time systems, ritual performances, and mixed media installations. His use of organic material references the physical, while other natural materials such as talc, stone, and wood connect the body to the world through ritual. Media such as adobe, chewing gum, gold, and glass point to transformation slowly and persistently, building a consideration of the transcendental in his practice. These materials are often presented in the form of compressed objects with the intent of inviting us to experience the work, sensing it, rather than interpreting it, which I think is a fundamental part to keep in mind uh, about Whiten's practice. Whiten started creating works in glass in the mid 1980s. Having extensively explored the potential of human organic components, as we've said, but including skulls, blood, and hair, or even the roughness of animal leather, um, passing through uncountable trivial everyday objects such as umbrellas, sheets, wax. He finds in glass the ultimate materialization of change, that which can say truly is the artist's main media. Change, transformation, physical and chemical alterations that come to surface through the passing of time are for Whiten irrefutable traces of his artistic process. Glass, 
as a material that is perfectly, perf that is a perfect uh, performance of the transitional concept of change uh, is a material that, uh, that Whiten has specialized in. So if, if we think about it, right, it has been, glass has been liquid before it became solid and can easily crack into thousands of minuscule pieces whose form is really impossible to distinguish. So depending on the shape it takes, Glass can block or reveal, protect or give access, prohibit or permit. Curator Virginia Icorn uh, further explains this important aspect of Whiten's practice. And here I quote, Whiten characterizes glass as a transcendental material, something that is simultaneously both a conduit and a barrier. It is this duality, this tension between transparent, transparency and impediment, which Whiten brings forth in his work, end quote. So Whiten is more comfortable defining himself as an image maker who produce, produces cultural objects than as an artist. He reclaims the sublime that lies within the most mundane, mundane and accessible items that populate our daily lives and perhaps goes to, uh, so his intention to be called a cultural, a cultural maker uh, than an artist has perhaps something to do with that mundane characteristic of his work. Um, he does this, so he reclaims the sublime and the mundane by honoring the fact that sometimes what is more interesting in a work is that which one cannot yet see as what is being presented now is only an indication of what that might actually become in the future or what that was in the past. The respect towards the pace of process and evolution is that which for the artist constitutes us as human beings. So he's constantly attuned to the entanglements between humanity and unworldliness uh, in his work. So after this brief, um, introduction in Whiten's general practice and creative concerns, let's turn our attention to the work after Phaeton from 2013. It consists of a glass ch chariot made out of handcrafted crystal clear and ionized glass with golden brass uh, fittings that connect its parts. At the center of this chariot, at the place where the driver would normally be seated or, or positioned, lies a flat, colorful crystal sphere. This is the chariot's conductor. This is what will guide its way throughout its path. To control a chariot, one must command several minds at once, if we think about it. So firstly, they're on, of course. And secondly, the minds of the horses who pull it. However, this chariot here cannot count on the presence of any human or animal bodies to lead it. And although it seems stuck and perhaps immobile, its lack of command transmits a feeling of radical freedom. As its title indicates, after Phaeton comes from the tale of Phaeton, a Greek mythology team that has fascinated artists such as Paul Rubens and Dominique Lefebvre since the Middle Age. Phaeton, which in Greek means the shining one, is the son of a water nymph, Clymene, and Apollo, the god of sun. So Apollo promised his son Phaeton that one day he would let him drive his chariot. But deep inside, Apollo knew that that was a very dangerous desire that would bring his son chaos and ruin. So when Phaeton finally stepped into that chariot, the horses reared then he lost, he lost control of it. Driven wild, the animals started sharing the, the earth, reducing Africa to a desert. Earth, in danger of burning up, appealed in desperation to Zeus for help. In order to preserve the earth, then Zeus struck the chariot with a thunderbolt and destroyed it. 
In his processual thinking, Whiten asks with his sculpture, what can happen after the passage of Phaeton through this planet, making, making then a comment about the impact of the Anthropocene on the environment. Glass here comes not only as a mark of the chariot's movement and transition through time and space, but also as an indication of wisdom. Position at the place where the chariot, well, uh, in the chariot where the conductor would take seat, the crystal glass sphere seems to be its guide. This material metaphor embodies narratives related to power, belief, continuity of being, and understanding of humanity's place in the world. It is definitely a critique to humans' devastating effects on the earth, but at the same time that Whiten reveals this specific preoccupation through this work, he does not intend intended to accommodate only one meaning. Seeing after Phaeton in person is thus a fundamental part of its experience because our body will carry within it information and, and knowledge that will help us uh, experiencing and feeling the potential of this work. The work is impressive and beautiful and its brightness lightens up the entire room. Visitors are able to walk around it and physically realize what it would feel like to drive such a chariot. What would they do if, with this kind of power? And I think that more importantly, what are we doing with this almost endless power that we have over the earth right now? All very important questions that um, Whiten illuminates with this work. And I invite you to come see it for yourself and hope you'll share it with share your impressions with us here um, again the work is on view at the mclean center for canadian and Indig indigenous and canadian art at, at the ago on the second floor and i look forward to hearing your impressions thank you so much for being here with me and have an amazing rest of your day bye